Let us pray. O God, our loving Heavenly Father, we come into your presence tonight with our worship. You have brought us to seek you, and we ask that you will bless us yet again. At Christmas, we celebrated the way in which you reached down to us in our weakness and need through your own Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and we should celebrate that daily. Through him, we have the forgiveness that we need for our sins, and we confess that we need to be cleansed right now, even if we prayed that this morning. We ask for the help of the Holy Spirit to give us the desire and strength to keep temptation at bay and live as Jesus would have were he on earth today. We'll read soon of the next part of the story of how you used a faithful servant, Nehemiah, to bring restoration to your work. We heard previously of how this applies on several levels, from personal to local to cosmic. The principle is the same. If we obey you and depend on you for direction and resources, great things can happen so that your name is exalted. We bow before you, the God who has all power and authority, and we are glad that this extends to pagan kings and emperors. They rejoice in their greatness and power, but so many do not realize that it is only there because they are allowed it by your sovereign grace. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Throughout history, men have lost what they trusted in, and were shattered. The wise rulers, however, looked to you and sought your direction, and we rejoice in the clear testimony of our own Queen to her faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, bless her. We will hear how you equip Nehemiah with the resources to rebuild Jerusalem to your glory. But first, you have prepared him and also the hearts of those whom you had mapped out to be part of the work. There were enemies, but you strengthened your servant to face them in your name, and they had no answer. Of course they didn't. There is no answer to the authority of the God who created the universe and who hasn't changed one bit from the time that he did it. Oh, we praise you that we have you on our side. The scripture says, if God be for us, who can be against us? And so we are encouraged to work for you, not least in the business of prayer. You have been speaking a lot to us, Lord, as regards prayer. You have led us to new ventures that will open up the work in our parish and further abroad. On Saturday next, we will seek your face in a special way. And we ask that this will encourage us further. Our world is in crisis because of a virus, but we look to the God who is in control and who is maybe giving the world its last chance before Jesus returns. We don't know, but we nevertheless offer ourselves to serve you and bring glory to you. We thank you for the teaching from our preachers and maybe share it with others as you give us opportunity, and we pray for those opportunities. So continue with us tonight, Lord, as we sing along with the songs that you led your servants to select. We thank you that for many decades, the praise items in Sandyford have been chosen to reinforce the truths of your word as it was preached. We love to sing, and we pray that you would hasten the day when we can return to the church building to do it together. But for now, we thank you for providing us with what we have. We thank you for the people who are joining us, who would not normally come to Sandyford, and may they feel part of us. May they hear you speaking to them tonight, as much as to the members. And maybe for someone, tonight will be the night of sweet surrender to the God who is calling to them. May we all get closer to you tonight, Lord. And may you feel the love of our hearts as we bask in your presence. We pray in the name above all names, which is that of Jesus, the Christ, your own Son, our Lord. 
Amen. We sing again in the next song, which is Amazing Grace, and it is the contemporary version. <laughs> 